I want to ask you um, is more things actually. Um, one thing is um, one thing is a forgiveness. Yeah. Yes. I feel that um, I have got stuck there somewhere. Yes. Very stuck. Very. Forgiveness is difficult if you focus on other. Forgiveness. is doing yourself a favour. Yes. Because if you feel that you hold something, strong feelings against someone, be sure that you are overlooking your own self. That some way you know, to, to, to cherish or to nurture or to keep feelings of uh, unforgiveness or um, you know, judgments or whatever, is already Damaging your house, it, it does. It does, and almost always, uh, it's a, a kind of negative subjectivity, meaning that we we are judging on the base of some just a feeling or like this. No, um, it doesn't mean that someone or cannot do something that is really distasteful or wrong or unjust towards you. It is you who determine that you wish to forgive. You wish to forgive something because you don't want to carry the burden of it. Understand? It doesn't mean oh that makes everything right. It just means I make it right in my heart that uh, this thing take place. Maybe I have no power to change, or to even speak to someone or a party or whatever about it. But I make it right with God in my heart. I say, okay, if there is something that can be done to change this, I will please open my heart to a deeper seeing that I may get beyond this, because that's what it really means. Also, to get beyond something, and to return to your spaciousness. Because everyone, whatever your problem, the way it's been experienced, is solved through returning to your spaciousness. Everyone is suffering from claustrophobia of being. It's like somehow a problem, something unsolved, a pain is taking up spiritual gigabytes in your being. It's like, ooh, and you don't know how contaminated you become. You find yourself unable to to even wish an innocent person well, because uh, to to contaminated with these feelings, and yet like this you can begin to let go of them. Not trying to look and say, but I don't know the person is still wrong. They didn't apologize. They didn't say. Didn't explain, and so on. Well, you're gonna have to live with life like that a lot. Supposing also someone hurts you, you're hurt by someone, or you even hurt someone. And you're not able to see them again. Suppose they leave their body. What are you going to do? Suppose you feel hurt by someone, or you've hurt someone, and you cannot meet them to say, "Look, you know, man, I don't know. I just carried this thing for so long, and I'm just so happy to see you. So I can just tell you, look, I'm so, I'm so sorry for what happened. I I don't know quite what happened, but I really want to apologize because I know." Something I said or did may have hurt you, and something you said hurt me. But I've known you in a much deeper way than this. I know you are not about this, and I'm not prepared to hold that shape of you in my heart anymore, because that's not true of you. There are greater truths in you that I want to honor. That okay, and I wish to let that go. But suppose they're not there physically. What are you going to do? Then you must let it go to the grace of the Self, to the grace of God. But if you can meet and say, I would love to have the chance to, to just have a few words with you and to straighten some things out and say, you know, it's life, you know, no life is so perfect personally. We are going to even find people who feel hurt by your, just the fact that you exist. 
you cannot just put everything right, but you can begin to to put yourself in a place to say, you know, whatever it is, I see that life is just full of so much inconsistency. How are you going to put all of life right? You have to start with your own heart about it. Because it's you, it's eating at you. So although it bites, it bites more holding on to it. Make a step and say, you know, it hurts, something is hurting inside. I wish to be free of it. I gave some a little exercise some while ago where I was sharing people about just saying thank you. Hmm? Just thank you. I I said it's one of the greatest mantras. Thank you. Start just say thank you. Thank you, thank you. With meaning. Some people say thank you for what? Some people tell you, no? But I want to say thank you for. What has life given me to be? I said, man, you are lost. Never mind. Just imagine everyone in the world has been cursing you. I'm going to show you something. By yourself, unto yourself, just start to say thank you. If you can't think what for, just start with just saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe you start to feel, thank you that I'm able to say thank you. Thank you that I'm alive, I'm healthy enough. I still have one leg. <laughs> thank you. I could have lost two. Thank you. Thank you that my mind is, I can still think for myself. Thank you. Thank, say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And you know, it is one of the most popular videos, because so many people listening, and so many people say, actually, it changed the vibration inside. I didn't realize I'm hanging on to something, like you feel justified in being miserable. And just uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like this. Simple things. I don't want to give you seven steps to freedom. Simple things, you know. Say thank you, thank you, thank you. Because what do we gain by holding on to a pain that sometimes was not even intended? We don't know. And even if it was intended, hmm? take example from Jesus. He said, Father. Forgive them, because they don't know what they're doing. Who can say like that? I says, no, they, they do know what they were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. I hear this voice a lot. No. I heard someone say, a bit of a tough guy. He said, yes. There's two reasons why I don't trust people. He said, there's two reasons I don't trust people. One that I don't know them. And second reason, I know them. If you have this kind of mentality, where you are going to go? <laughs> it means you have a lockdown situation. Like, I meet you, I already don't trust you, man. So you have it to you, on your lap to make me trust you. That is a very poor stance. Your freedom matters. Your freedom matters. And many times we are hurt by things, very often by things misunderstood. Misunderstanding happens. The nature of life is like that. If you are going to spend your time trying to correct life everywhere, you have no time for yourself. Right where you are, you can begin to say, Yeah, it hurts. Something's hurt. Choose. I choose. No, I want to let it go. Don't say, I want to let it go. Say, I'm choosing to let it go. Want is later. I want it later. I choose is now. Just mean to let it go. Let go of the shapes you're holding on to about anything in life. Not just what people may have done to hurt you, or what you may have conceived of. 
You don't have to hold any shape. And I tell you, one of my most simple and powerful pointers is to say to you, don't take shape. Don't take shape. Because our most powerful exercises is to bring your attention back to the space of you. When you come back to the space of yourself, beyond objective forms and formulas, this is not there, whatever this is, is not there in you. So if something is preventing you, holding you into a shape, how can you experience your how can you be in the experience of your natural state? Nothing in life that is phenomenal has commanded you, Thou shalt not forget me. That is the power of your consciousness. It is self-correcting, self-cleaning, if you allow. But if you take the shape of a person, you are bound in time, and bound by memories, and bound by actions subjectively perceived. Free yourself. Free yourself. Don't say, OK, when I go home. No, free yourself. Free yourself. If you have the kind of mentality that is an expert at negativity, disarm yourself. But are you willing? Choosing right here with me. Yes. I want today to be a possibility for you to know that what is now. You woke up this morning, you woke up this morning, and before your first thought, your first thought, your first feelings arose in something that was already here. So before we start to sail out to sea, check in. What is already here? What is already so? What is not about future? Can anybody check in? What is here? What is here like? What does here need? Just check. Everything else is a story, an intention, a projection, a reminding, the best reminding, is always now. What is here? You know, I so love to share this with you. I so love to, to at least be present to say this to you, because I am not directing you somewhere. Go over there. Climb that hill. Get rid of these things. I am telling you something that which is always present with you. And you say two things, I am afraid to be myself. And at the same time you say, I am yearning for freedom. And I say, OK, if you are yearning for freedom, where is freedom until you recognize it? Where is peace until you discover it? Where, where, was, where is it hanging out? Where is love until you discover it? Where was it? Did you create it? Or did you discover? I am not talking about a love story. I am talking about love. Where where was it? Hiding behind some place? Where is it until you discover it? 
Where was it? Where is freedom? When? Even to make an appointment with freedom is too late. What is freedom? Show me your chains. Because I tell you, this can keep going on and on and on with each one of you, whoever I know what is the thing that is still somehow we are protecting something. I don't know what it is. From person to person, it may have a different story, dressed in a different garment. What is appearing to block you from where I am speaking? What is it? And is it worth it? Is it worth it? No, it's not worth it. No, it was enough. I, that's, I, I feel it was enough, you know. Yes. I all want this to, this life to be full, full, full of life and full of God. Fully lived. What's no. what's what's stopping you? <laughs> I don't know. Even to say, yeah, I want it to be full. I want it to be perfect. But make a start. You say, I want it to be perfect. Maybe it's not going to be perfect like this immediately. There's going to be a perfect recognition. And then it's going to take time to stabilize, to get used to being yourself. Don't hold up two great ideals. No, I want this and I want to be hard. No, just make this step. What is this step? I don't even know if it is a step. This is a step. When you take it, it vanishes immediately. What is it? Because even a step, I have to try and clarify the step. I must you step where? What about if you don't take even one step? What about just being fully present and not taking one step towards anything at all? Let, just let everything just let go of everything, and just be fully, fully, fully as empty and as present as you can be. Is that a hard thing to do? I'm not asking you to go clean your house up and tidy the garden and sell off your junk. I'm just saying, just right now. I know how it can feel. Something is holding. Yeah, and are you the only one? We all know that. So, what is that? It's bear it. You're bearing it anyway. Your mind will tell you, you know. No, I'm not. I'm not going to give them the pleasure. I'm not going to give them the pleasure. Of me forgiving them. Ooh, what a friend you have. I'm not going to give them this opportunity to let them see me weak. Who is speaking like that? <laughs> yeah, it's good. You laugh it out. <laughs> laugh it out because it's very, very funnily funny. And it's understandable up to a point. It's understandable. But to carry on, you are so much bigger than that. You are so big, you are sizeless. Why let your mind shrink you, this tiny little peanut on the table? Mm. Mm. You can do. I am not going to put anything in front of you and say, Oh, but that is a really difficult one. It is difficult if you hang on to it. 
It's going to be very, maybe it may seem impossible until you are ready. That's how powerful your consciousness is. Uh, don't justify the thing that hurts you. You know, sometimes we are ourselves. You, we hurt ourselves more than other people hurt you by holding on and seething over it. Yes, now. Step into your now. In the now, nothing sticks. Nothing sticks. I draw a face, the moustache. Nothing sticks. You see, this 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 space is not a talking room. It's not a waiting room. It's a waking room. Live as though you have no time. At least have no time to waste. And who is harmed by it? Yes, the people, uh, you know, because your energy, your energy field is strong. You know, if somebody is in another country, your whole resentment uh, it, 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 it interferes with their thing. But you, you damage. No, you, you're real. You, you don't damage. I'm trying to get you to that place. But your personal self, which we are living in the instrument, the instrumental self, you clog up your your arteries. With this kind of stuff, you know, you want to be free. Forgive them before they commit a sin. Have this attitude. Live on an attitude of gratitude. I am not here to give a feel-good satsangs. I am telling you about yourself. Are already free. You are and can be, but need to experience it. Because if you set up a hurt base in yourself, there's going to be other people going to come and step on it. Just you know, it's not that difficult. It just starts with, I'm not willing to accept this anymore. That's it. Many people they um, have issues about forgiveness and you know how difficult it is to get past that. And I see how much suffering uh, comes out of it for themselves, because I have to remind them, you suffer. It's not that you are punishing others, you are punishing yourself for this. No? And I felt I wanted to for quite some time to really change the way to say, actually, you know. It's not other people give you suffering, actually. And there's nothing called suffering. If you suffer, you're experiencing. I remember uh, uh, one thing that I've shared before in satsang. There was, uh, was one satsang that take, took place in India at the feet of Srinisagadatta Maharaj, when one of the, one of the, uh, the people attending satsang, the gatherings, one young man said to him, you know, you know, um, sir, I, 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 I hear you. I respect you. I, I hear what you say, but if I am to be honest, I must confess that I'm always experiencing suffering. And uh, the master said to him, "No." He, he he sharply came. He said, "No. You are not experiencing suffering. You are suffering. You're experiencing." And that was very powerful for me to hear. You know, you are not experiencing suffering because suffering it doesn't exist as a thing. You see, if suffering exists as a state and a way in which you meet your experiencing. So what Sri Nisargadatta was doing in answering in this way was actually, you know, actually giving him back the power 
don't let something external determine how you respond you know you know you you're not experiencing suffering because suffering is not something that exists unto itself it is to do with a way in which you meet situations and circumstances and i'm saying now regard if i can say this regard all your experiences hmm, as gifts and opportunities from god meaning that you know if you if you say yeah but he gave me suffering no god doesn't give you suffering he gives you challenges and opportunities which human beings need to to look and to develop a, a powerful discernment in order to say to to make use of our experiences to transcend them to transcend lower states of consciousness if you have that outlook then for sure you will at some point turn and says you know it is good it was good for me how many times if you can throw your mind back a little bit and look and see how often an experience that was sour bitter acidic in the moment even though you didn't do much about it that later you saw that it brought a change in your life that your life needed but at that time you could not see you could not evaluate the the potential the possibilities out of it now imagine if you met that with a higher attitude in you that this is something that life is giving is giving through the instrument of this form that person and so on but actually the experience is actually tailor made for my life uh to make use of it to transcend and to go beyond limited states of outlook and conditioning and identity if you take that higher view you will see that wait a second you know you will waste no time just complaining and being a victim i would not encourage anyone you know under any circumstances to take on the label of a victim because when you take on the label of a victim is like you don't need an enemy you're already punishing yourself you're already fighting uh, against the wind so use your situations and circumstances it's easy in this world sometimes to blame or oh, is this one this one and sometimes it is true sometimes what someone is doing is not true it's not good but it doesn't mean that you you're going to turn two bad things don't make a good thing so you know there's a saying a wise saying and i like to share it it says a wise man uh builds a house out of the stones with the stones his enemies throw at him he builds a house for himself and lives happily in this house when i hear things like this you know it's, it means life is full of encouragement opportunities to grow if you don't grow as a human being doesn't matter where you are you could live on an island by yourself opportunities are there to expand to grow in your um, inner awareness of life and self you know so please please um learn to act more than react you know stop reflect take a moment ponder feel the impact of these experiences that come to you but don't blast out of it stay with it and and watch how it functions within you and how your mind and personal identity may join in with the wrong or a bad attitude wrong response and turn something which uh, presents an opportunity into a kind of betrayal or into some kind of um dissension into lower states uh, you you have the power as conscious beings because that's what you are don't look to other people always to help you take the responsibility because god has put you are consciousness you cannot be alive and not be conscious you may say of course there are you can give me examples of people who um are in you know a poor state of mind or something like this you know but that's not the general let's let's go for the general movement for now and then we can look at those those after you have within you as a healthy human being the capacity and the potential to think for yourself and even in situations that others may tell you it is hopeless wherever mm, there seems not to be a way 
God makes a way for you, if you have the right attitude. So, um, please reflect on this. And I will tell you, I only have um, uplifting messages for you, that are not based upon fantasy, but on tried and tested um, um, exercises and understanding that each of us have the capacity, uh, certainly the potential, to, to make use of and transcend. Rest up. You see? So don't worry about falling, falling. When we fall, it's because somehow you don't make use of your opportunity. Sometimes you have to fall. Sometimes we have to hit the ground with your body, not just with your feet. See that also as an opportunity. Slow down in your reaction to judge others. Reflect upon things yourself. And so you will stop just falling down. You start to fall upwards, like I say. You fall upwards into higher states of conscious, falling upwards into the embrace of God's love. That is my message I want to share with you today. Bless you all. Every one of you is worth it. Nobody came into life to be a loser and to just you know, suffer. That, that is an option, it is a possibility. We are free to be free, and we are free to be bound. Uh, make use of this uh, kind of advice. Don't let anyone tell you anything that is going to bring you down. And bringing you down means to, to, to weaken you in consciousness, to make you feel dependent always on other people's handout. You have the power. God gives you the power, and God never leaves you. It's we, through our mind and ego, turn away from this immense peace and source within ourselves. So God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I think that's the strongest thing because you say, um, you know, the the forgiveness, what the unforgiveness does to the person themselves. Yes. You know, this is where it kind of gives you strength to then forgive. Yes. Because of how much it burns you, the one who's holding on to the the unforgiveness. Yes. Know? It reminds me of the the, the the prayer, daily prayer. Forgive those who for trust us against us, as we forgive those who trust yeah. us against. No. Yes, it's not. It's not. It's not easy thing for some people to hear, you know, because sometimes we haven't tasted the fruit of it enough to trust it, you know. So you have to either you have an intuitive trust, or you know by grace you have that trust to at least try and, and to see. Wait a second, you know, to to understand that by holding grudges and unforgiveness towards others, it's you who suffer most. And sometimes we don't see that. We almost feel like, no, no, I'm punishing you by hating you. I said, no, you're also punishing yourself. You know? And there is a point, of course, there are people who do very wrong things, evil things, intentional things to others also. Should you just forgive them? I said, don't be in such a hurry to forgive. First try to understand that, you know, in the world it's a very mm, mm, unpredictable place, and uh, I would say, if you live by the light, you will be taken care of by the light. Human beings are not just gifted with great understanding of of the self. You know, we have to somehow develop in that. But I just want to encourage that it's not so difficult if you have the heart for it. And you have the the heart to say to to seek either through meditation or through prayer to say to a higher consciousness to say I I am open for this please help me to to go higher to understand because it's not easy if I'm if I'm meeting life only from my conditioning I can't see a way I can do that help me to raise above my present uh, level of maturity to the place where I can you know be. Um, to to transcend my own weakness, and maybe to be an encouragement to others in some simple way, some way. Mm. Then I know light comes, because um, if anybody is special, it's it's because of their openness, their openness to to 
to look in a direction that maybe seemed new to them, but their heart is helping them say, Listen, have a go, try. You know? Mm-hmm. But I say, Bless to everybody. Bless, bless, bless. Bless to everyone. It is not easy to be in this life if you are not aware of what God means in your heart, if you are not as yet, although it is there anyway, but if you are not aware of it as yet, then yes, life is full of challenges and promises that it cannot fulfil without you, your inner growth. You know, Everything is transient, everything is momentary. But um, yes. But in you is the highest possibility. In you is the highest possibility always. You cannot look to man to make to, to a success. You have to look to the higher power for success. That the success I'm speaking about, not just success about money and property and fame, but sex success in terms of an inner completeness, a peace. A natural happiness, uh, an empathy and compassion for other people, and a sense of justice, and these things—the the peace that come with that. This, for me, is the. This, these are the real fruits of the human experience. 